This video is going to cover robotics, what you can expect in this field, how to tailor your college education, and some research going on. So let's get started. Now robotics is a very broad term and refers to many different applications which I will go through first. Robotics includes medical robots which can mimic the movements of a surgeon for low invasive surgeries. It includes military robots such as maybe drones that are unmanned and maybe they take surveillance of various areas around the world and these can basically be thought of as flying robots. There are robots used to recover and defuse bombs or inspect a suspicious package which you can see here. There are robots used to search through debris which was implemented to search through debris of the World Trade Center after 9-11 as an example. There are sentry guns that automatically can track targets using sensors, and much more. The military is huge on robotics, and it's something you could definitely get into at one of the big defense companies. Robotics are also used in automation and manufacturing. Pretty much any product out there, from cars to dishwashers to computers, are made with the help of robots, which can assemble, paint, drill, and just build things with extreme precision. These robots need to be able to repeat the same movements over and over and keep their precision, which is not easy to engineer. Maybe there are sensors that tell the robot how hard it is gripping an object, or that help determine how hard to tighten a screw, which they'll have to do every single time. They may have program routines where they have to specify the velocity, acceleration, deceleration, and more of these robots so everything works just right. And these robots can be accurate to less than a millimeter. And these are really important because they are so much more accurate than a human can be. There are actually a lot of careers out there where you could work on building robots like these. There are household robots that can automatically vacuum your floors. There are agricultural robots which can help in harvesting, planting seeds, weed control, soil analysis, and automating these processes. They've made a robot that can load a dishwasher. There are nanorobots, which exist on a nanometer scale, which can do things like count the specific molecules in a chemical sample, or destroy cancerous cells, and there's lots of potential in medicine here. Self-driving cars can be categorized in the field of robotics. They even made a robot that can manually solve a Rubik's Cube in less than one second. It's not this one you see here, but I found this very interesting and will provide a link to the video below, and I highly recommend you watch it, and I will talk about it in a bit. And of course there is so much more. So again, as you can see, this is a very broad field. So now let's talk about which majors to pick to get into this field, and as you can guess, there isn't one right answer because of how broad it is. Now it really depends on what you want to do in terms of robotics. Obviously if your school offers robotics or robotics engineering as a major, that is a good path to go. But many schools don't, and you absolutely do not need to major in robotics to get into this career. The other best majors to get into are mechanical engineering, mechatronics, electrical engineering, computer engineering, or computer science. Now depending on the school, mechatronics might be offered as an actual major, or it could be just a subfield of mechanical engineering. But either way, it's pretty much the combination of everything else you see here, and it's also probably the closest thing to robotics that there is without actually majoring in robotics. As always, these aren't the only majors you can get into, but these are some of the most common. But these are very different, so it really depends on what you want to do in the field of robotics. So now let's go into more detail on these. When it comes to robotics, there are three main aspects. The body or construction of the robot, the electrical aspect, and the programming. A mechanical engineer would be mostly responsible for the body. The electrical aspect would be for an electrical or computer engineer. Then the programming would be probably for a computer engineer or computer scientist. Then a mechatronics major would be pretty much qualified for everything you see here, as well as a robotics major. But now let's break these down so you can see what's more interesting to you. So first, the body of the robot would again be for the mechanical engineer, and it's about designing the structure of the robot. Can the robot support enough weight without breaking? Can it maneuver certain terrain? Like military robots are sometimes need to go up and down stairs. They might need caterpillar tracks to go over mud or other surfaces rather than wheels that you see in this other picture and a mechanical engineer would need to figure this out and design everything properly. In a class you might be given some robotic structure and asked to find the torque about some given point. You could be asked how forces would change if the mass were distributed differently where you actually have to account for the weight of the arm. Or you might be asked to relate the rotational velocities of one part of the structure to another. Like if this part is rotating so fast, how fast is this one rotating? As you can guess, this is basically just a lot of math and physics. It includes trig, coordinate systems, and so on. Looking at a robotics college exam, there was calculus, lots of matrix math, and more to solve these physics problems for the robotic structure. Now on to the electrical aspect. 
Robots with motion require power which often comes from electricity. Even when it's just simply turning a wheel, they need electricity to do this. In order to move the caterpillar tracks of a robot, it basically requires a circuit in which there is a battery and wires that carry the current to the device that turns the tracks. It might not be exactly like this, but that's the idea. But the electric component also includes sensors. Whether the robot needs sensors to detect temperature, position, sound, force, and more, those things are measured by the sensor and use electric signals. But basically these sensors make sense of the world around the robot so it can determine what actions to take. But they also really need to analyze the voltage signals that help move the robot because those signals might need to control very quick and precise movements. And this is where electrical controls comes in, where you're implementing control systems such as a PID controller. This is something you will likely learn when you take controls. This is a control system that calculates error from what you want to be the output versus what is actually measured at the output, and then it makes changes to lower that error. Such as cruise control in your car, where you might go a little uphill, then your car slows down, and the control system senses that error, provides feedback to turn the wheels faster, and the error reduces. Then this constantly continues. It seems simple, but block diagrams for something like a PID controller can actually look quite complicated and also involve some calculus. Here you'll see the error that's calculated, the feedback, and more. But overall these controls are really important. Like imagine making a robot that can play ping pong against a professional, which they have done. If that robotic arm tilts the paddle slightly too much or moves just a bit too far to hit a ping pong ball, it will lose. It needs to be fast but also accurate and all those electric signals help provide the detail for what actions it will take. So now we have this robot that is structured as we want it to be, it's powered properly, and has sensors to give the robot an idea of the environment around it. But now how will it make a decision on what to do, like if it wants to avoid an obstacle? Well that's where programming comes in, and you can think of this as the brain of the robot. The programming is how the robot decides when or how to do something based on what it gets from the sensor data. Like the sensor might tell there's an obstacle in the way, but should it turn right, turn left, completely turn around, stop, and so on. That's where programming comes in. There are three common aspects of this that you can get into, which are computer vision, motion planning, and machine learning, which I'll talk about now. Computer vision is about a computer being able to understand visual data. So like a sensor might be able to send out a signal and detect an object is in front of it, but it doesn't know whether that object is a person, an animal, a table, and so on. Whereas computer vision is much more complex, and using cameras, algorithms, and more, it determines what an object is. Like, is it a person or is it a car? Robots might need to do this to know what they are picking up, for example, and if it's okay to do so. Or so a self-driving car can determine what obstruction is ahead in order to make the appropriate maneuver. Then motion planning is obviously about moving a robot from a starting to ending point in some optimal or desired way. You might have some configuration space with obstacles and the robot has to determine an optimum way to get from one point to another and there are many ways to do this. You'll learn algorithms that optimize how to get from point A to point B, like maybe Dijkstra's algorithm, which takes a discrete amount of paths and determines the optimum route to take. Like if you want to get from S to T, what's the best way to do this given all these distances? You'll learn this in your algorithm design and analysis class as a computer science major, which you might take your third year in undergrad where you will do mathematical proofs as well as program the algorithm, and this here is one of the applications. If you consider these distances from one point to another to be roads, this would be like Google Maps, which doesn't use Dijkstra's algorithm exactly, but it is the foundation for getting from one point to another. Then machine learning is part of artificial intelligence, which I talked about before, where robots interact with the environment on their own and use learning algorithms to determine what to do. For example, that ping pong playing robot uses machine learning to figure out how good a player is based on their movements during a game of ping pong. Then it plays against the player differently depending on how good that player is. It might return the ball slowly, medium, or very hard. It also uses cameras and sensors to determine the speed of the ball, its trajectory, spin, and more so it can accurately return the ball. Detecting these also might be part of the electrical aspect. Or they have robots that use machine learning to learn how to grab something and pick it up in one try. Believe it or not, having a robot grab and hold on to something is no easy task. But using a database of 3D objects and learning algorithms, they have made a robotic arm that can grab objects on the first try and not drop them. Or maybe a robot learns how to navigate an obstacle course by attempting the course, then if it crashes it reprograms itself and attempts the course again. 
Machine learning is a huge field in itself, but it applies to robotics a lot as well. Now I know I've covered a lot in terms of these subfields within robotics, but it's important to realize just how much there is out there. Now to sum this all up, I'll reference the Rubik's Cube solving robot I talked about earlier. If you want to be the person who maybe designs the actual structure and want to make sure it can move the pieces fast enough without the machine itself breaking, for example, and make sure it can repeat this process without the structure wearing out, that's mechanical engineering. If you want to be responsible for making sure the microcontroller works properly and powers the robot to move, plus ensuring the controls work, such as the electric signals produced, turn the sides of the Rubik's Cube properly because you wouldn't want to overturn it because then you couldn't turn another side then electrical or computer engineering might be right for you. And if you want to maybe design the algorithm that determines the best moves to make for the Rubik's Cube, like making sure it goes the least amount of turns, or you want to work with computer vision that uses cameras to analyze the Rubik's Cube, which tells the computer how the Rubik's Cube is laid out so the algorithm can run its code to determine the best moves to make, then computer engineering or computer science might be best for you. Computer science majors do work more with algorithms, but this is just the general idea. And remember, mechatronics or robotics could get into all of these. Maybe not as much with the algorithms or machine learning, but overall most of the things I've talked about they can go into.